Hey guys, today I'm going to be analyzing more of the new episode of Gravity Falls, The Last Mablecorn. If you haven't watched part 1 of this episode analysis, then click the link in the description below. Anyway, let's begin. On the tree for No Man's Land, we can see that someone wrote R.I.P. Shmebuluk Sr. If you don't remember, he was the gnome that looked exactly like Shmebuluk, and he was with Ford in a memory. There are some epic secrets that we learned in the last few minutes of this episode. When Dipper puts the machine on Ford's head, there are several thoughts that appear on the screen. I can't tell him, he's not ready. I'm sorry, Fiddleford. I miss Dimension 52. Crampelter. Unified Theory of Weirdness. Now, if you're confused on who Crampelter is, he is one of the bullies that is seen in A Tale of Two Stands and Dreamscapers. It's odd that Ford is thinking of this bully after so many years, but it seems to just be a reference and nothing too important. From this scene, we learn that Ford and Bill made a deal until the end of time, but later, Ford realized he had been tricked. Bill made Ford believe he was friendly, when in reality he was using him to try and take over the world. Trusting Bill was Ford's biggest mistake, and it was trusting him that made him write the extremely memorable phrase in the journal, Trust No One. There have been many codes throughout the episodes that have referenced Bill tricking Ford. There was one code a while ago that was hidden in some of the shorts, and it said, I was so blind, he lied to me, the darkness is near. When we learned that Bill possessed Ford's body with Ford's approval, we know what Bill is talking about in Sock Opera when he said it's been a long time since he has inhabited a body. It has been at least 30 years since Bill entered a human body, and that human body was actually Ford. In this scene, Ford and Bill are playing a game of chess. This is very symbolic because chess is a game with two opponents, and each opponent makes their move with pawns. The battle between Ford and Bill could now be compared to a chess game, and Ford's pawns would be his family, while Bill's pawns would be the monsters in his nightmare realm. They take turns fighting, and this could explain why the writers chose for them to play chess out of all the games that could have been played. It turns out that Bill was the one who tricked Stanford into building the portal. Because it sounded like an amazing idea, there was no way Stanford would turn it down. He dedicated so much of his life to discovering the mysteries of the universe, and building an interdimensional portal would solve those mysteries. He had no idea it could be used for evil, especially by a triangle demon he thought he could call a friend. Bill tells Ford not to have a heart attack, he's not 92 yet. We know that Ford will die, but this can be seen as a good thing because cartoon characters don't age. Unless of course Bill isn't as all-knowing as he says he is, then Ford won't die at 92. But many hints do tell us that Bill is the all-seeing eye, and he knows a lot of information. If Ford actually has a heart attack when he is 92, then he won't die during the course of the show. While it seems like he is safe for the rest of Gravity Falls, we should keep a close eye on his twin brother, who is in danger of biting the dust. We finally get the first glimpse on what is actually on the other side of the portal. Bill's Nightmare Realm is going to come to Gravity Falls from the other side, and this is most likely going to be the apocalypse and darkness that has constantly been hinted at. Bill will get his hands on the interdimensional rift by possessing someone on the outside of the shack. Who will Bill possess? In his eye, there are tons of different characters that he might make a deal with. He's most likely going to target the people that are dumb enough to make a deal with him, and not think twice about it. I think a strong possibility is for Bill to take advantage of Seuss. Even though Seuss knows how bad Bill can be, anyone can be manipulated, and Seuss may want something that Bill can offer. Nobody in Gravity Falls is safe as long as they are outside of the Mystery Shack, so it's going to be really interesting to see who Bill chooses to make a deal with. There are a decent amount of codes in this episode, so they are going to be in a separate video and I can talk about them as well as explain what they mean for the show. Anyway, that's all for this video. Be sure to leave a thumbs up and comment below to tell me what you thought. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.